In today's episode, we will be upgrading our orbital station that has been so far producing science and questioning the cows, how do they feel in the orbit of the planet Kerbin, by not one, but two cyclotrons, yes. And this is what it's gonna be look like after it's deployed, because we want to be able to generate quarks, both prograde, retrograde and other grade quarks, and hopefully bring up some more special science in terms of advancing our career and our playthrough. All right, so with that thing being said, let's get into the building. Right, so we will be starting our build by building a probe core and then based on that probe core we will be assembling everything else. Yes, then we will be placing another uh, central station part followed by another probe core for symmetry reasons and then we're gonna be placing up some batteries I'm trying to figure out which batteries would fit okay this one would fit quite nicely so let's put an additional two or three on the side so we have a total of four batteries right and then uh, experiments <coughs> those are the ones that we will be sending up but uh, they are not the science equipment so I'm just trying to figure out if we should add additional equipment okay yeah cyclotron they should go both up and down because I need to build this symmetrical yes symmetrical because I need to be able to dock it and uh, yeah it becomes increasingly hard to dock if it's not symmetrical all right then we need an RCS tank because this thing will need to float and dock so i'm just trying to find a big enough rcs tank okay now again it's symmetrical symmetric is the keyword here all the way in terms of payload so everything has to be symmetrical docking ports right then let's place docking ports on all four sides because this will be also a central hub, so there will be experiments going left and right, and well, there will be probably be going some docking ports and more, you know, flyers coming in and docking to expand the station later on. Right. Okay, let's call this Station Cyclotrons Station Components. Yeah. Very innovative, very imaginative name. What can I tell you? I'm full of ideas. Yeah, all right, so uh, let's put in an antenna for the remote tech so that we can control the damn thing. And then we need to be able to put another longer range antenna on the other side. So, oh, okay. Let's put an SAS unit here and let's put another SAS unit here or maybe two SAS units, yeah, so that we can actually control this because those cyclotrons are there very heavy and we need to have control authority. So this one will also feature the control authority for the entire station, right? Okay, we have attached an additional um, antenna and now I'm thinking of RCS thrusters. Look, we have heavy RCS blisters. And in order to make this symmetrical and, well, not just symmetrical, but also controllable, I'm going to be placing this thing in uh, perfect symmetry. So let's see, we take these, we place them here. That will grant us some authority and then we place those, uh, rotate like that. Yeah, and then we place those like that. So in theory, this should be perfectly symmetrical and apparently it is. So when translating, it's translating, it's not rotating, and that's good enough. All right, good, good to know. Now that's our payload. So we make sure that we auto strut everything, and then when we're done with payload, we will be encasing that in the biggest fairing that you have ever seen. Yeah, probably, maybe, uh, not sure. Okay, anyway, decoupler, and then we need a small transfer engine that will get it to the station so I'm actually thinking of like a small nope big that well that looks better and I need a skipper engine yeah so that gives us 579 meters per second delta V which is more than enough just to perform the rendezvous remember we don't need to go interplanetary yet this thing just needs to get to orbit and dock and rendezvous with the station but uh, the task of this transfer stage is just that. It needs to be able to dock and rendezvous with the station. 
nothing more than that. Even the docking will be pulled off by the RCS, so yeah. Right. So now we need a bigger kahuna. Now we need to find out how to launch this damn, damn thing. So I'm actually looking for the Kerbodyne adapter. Good, and then now uh, let's see the biggest tank that we can find. Okay, cram it down, son, and let's see, there we go. So that's 1,673 meters per second. Ha! Huh. I would need around four and a half, five-ish thousand. So let's see, if I put a decoupler and I place the side boosters, which would be liquid boosters, or like this Ghidoras. If I place two Ghidoras, or... Sorry, let's try first with the solid rocket boosters. Clydesdales, no. They won't cut it. So let's see, I'm actually looking for... Let's see, if we would do two Clydesdale boosters. They're not really symmetrical. Oh, what are... Wait, what are you doing? Okay, now duplicate, please. I'm also trying to make this easy. 3.7 and 1.35 it's not ideal I can tell you that much that's not ideal I might consider actually making a different kind of booster that's the one twin bore booster there we go it looks dope and then we're gonna be building another fuel tank above it Oh, that's a big one. Tundra. Okay, I need to reroute the solar panels, apparently. Alright. There we go. That looks actually kind of okay. So what I want to do, I want to add on top of this Tundra, you know, the aerodynamic cones. We will need some separatrons because if this deploys, it will crash into the main stack. I mean, that's a given. So just make sure that we add separatrons and the fuel lines. So with the fuel lines, it gives us 4.1 thousand meters per second. That's better. It's not ideal, but it's better. So what if I place four of them? And if I do an onion staging, that would actually make sense. So let me put struts here. Normally I don't do struts that much, but let's put struts. I prefer auto struts. But uh, then let's also now do separatrons for fuel lines and onion staging. All four will be feeding into the central stack. I don't think I will be changing that. That gives us 5,000 meters per second, which is more than enough. We add some fins. There we go for stabilization and then I need to add separatrons. So you guys will be separating all at the same time. There you go, there you go, there you go. And on the other side we have this one, then we have this one, then we have this one, and we have finally this one. So all of the separatrons we put in the same stack as the uh, decouplers and that should be it that should be give us 4.9 thousand meters per second and it actually takes roughly 3.4 to get into orbit so i think this should be enough and uh, we should probably go for the launch i'm thinking let me just quickly check okay this guy this guy Right, group actions. Custom one, deploy the antennas. Custom two, deploy the solar panels. Custom three, deploy the radiators. Yeah, and then <clears throat> I think it's time that we start thinking about the launch platform, shall we? Which one do we have? Do we have shuttle? That doesn't look right. Nope, do we have something else? Saturn V launch base? Nope. Doesn't look good. Dang it. Soyuz. I mean, of all of them, Soyuz looks the best, I gotta tell them. So let's take the Soyuz launch base. Clamps and everything. Alright, turn it like that. Put four-way symmetry, shall we? 
Come on. I can't. Okay. Yeah, because I was using the wrong one. Okay, so this would be a four-way symmetry. Yes. Okay, so it's at the launch pad. Time to launch the damn thing. Let's go. All right, and here we go. The roar of the engines is heard and we are going upwards and onwards. Yes, finally time to launch this. This will be a remote controlled procedure and we are launching a little bit higher aspect than I would like to admit. However, it will help us greatly in terms of getting there and ensuring that everything looks great. So with that thing being said, we are passing the apoapsis of uh, 30 kilometers. So I'm actually starting to pitch down slightly just to ensure that we have a good view and everything goes as planned. Uh, and uh, the apoapsis is uh, I'm gonna keep around 100 kilometers as per usual 105 to just get a little bit above the station I think station is about above 90 Roughly so we set it as a target and then if we go higher We'll have a chance to go slower and let the station catch up to us So there we go. There is a certain amount of fiddlage that now needs to happen after, of course, we perform the circularization burn, but it's no biggie. I mean, we will, of course, take care of it. Now, that being said, so let's see. Uh, we are at 85 kilometers, pointing the maneuver prograde. I was thinking of even queuing it up, up the flight director, but since I have staging, maybe it's not the best idea. Maybe I'm just gonna do a manual burn. And yeah, three, five, four, three, two, one, and hitting the gas. For your benefit, this is being shown twice the time acceleration, just so, well, you don't wait very long, and I thought it would be important to keep things going. By the way, guys, I have just returned from my vacation. It has been a little bit, you know, uh, relaxing and everything, going into hospitality business and, you know, opening, uh, opening a booking.com uh, business where people can come for their vacation rentals. But, having said that, now, it's called, we are in completely different sphere. So now the point is we are slowly getting our periapsis and apoapsis ready. And I don't want to go, I want it to be 100 by 88 and that's deliberate. I have extended the solar panels and the radiators and the antennas, of course, for the glory shot, but also so we don't run out of power, which I don't think should be happening anytime soon. So at the descending node, we have 0 0.1, which or 0 0.3, which we need to correct in terms of inclination. And now I'm just trying to fiddle with that maneuver node at that point, if I can secure an encounter, which of course I couldn't. Ah, so some fiddlage later, we managed to secure an encounter at that point, and that will take us a 35 meters per second burn as said, that's like nothing. So we might as well take it. And after that, we will make sure that we are good. All right. Pointing maneuver prograde. All right, so there we go, 17.1 meters per second burn. Those are like tiny burns that ensure that we get a really, really nice rendezvous. All right, so there we go. Now what we have is we have a very decent encounter, 41 meters per second. And my idea was that we do it on the sunny side so that we do perform the burn once we are actually closing up. So what I wanna do, this burn was just to ensure a good rendezvous. So uh, there we go, careful, easy does it, Tiger. Okay, good, we have a good intersect, fine. So on the next orbit, we will be doing the rendezvous with the space station. Um, initial, initial rendezvous that I got was on the dark side and given that the game can be really dark, I really wanted to avoid that. So that's why I was pushing for a slightly better uh, rendezvous in the daylight. 
Also, as you notice, we have plenty of Delta V, so I have decided to detach this simply for the maneuverability reasons, because it will be much easier to maneuver around with a smaller stack. So that was another thing that I mentioned. So, okay, now we are at target velocity, relative velocity 38 meters per second. And as we will be closing down, that will be dropping. So what I'm trying now to find is the uh, docking alignment indicator, which is one of my favorite mods for docking. It's simply amazing. And I know how to dock without it, but it gets really hard. Okay. And here we see that we will get our encounter and there is our station. So now what I want to make sure that we are well aligned. So what I'm trying now to do is I'm trying to make sure that we do retrograde to the target because I'm worried that we might be simply passing it. And then I want to reduce my velocity as much as possible relative to the target. And I, at the same time, I'm trying to get my target alignment indicators to align. And that's not an easy feat always. That bending, in this case, we were coming parallel to each other, which meant that basically the maneuver wasn't as simple and as straightforward as it was presenting itself. So yeah, there was that. Right, so with that thing being said, now what we need to do is we need to just point prograde, make sure that the prograde alignment indicators are aligned, so to say, and our C relative velocity is 1.73, and I'm trying now to secure a very, very gentle arrival. Um, the values that I'm reading are from the docking point alignment indicator. We're trying to dock to a Clampatron docking port senior. And right now I'm not controlling from the docking port I want to use because I still want to make sure that, uh, that we rendezvous with the station because we are coming close, but still we are still not there yet. So at this point I will go and switch to control from here, but I'm just making sure that... Uh, my C velocity is over one, so it's 1.86. I have folded down the radiators and the solar panels so we don't accidentally hit anything. The docking port selected on the station is correct one, but the docking port that I'm docking with is not the correct one, so that one needs to be set target as supposed to and now I'm just trying to secure the docking okay so now at this point I will say control from here which has completely flipped my docking port alignment indicator as it should and now the procedure is the following I'm first making sure that the orange pip is in the center with the orange uh, small reticule somewhere either above or below so that takes a little bit of while. I'm also thinking how do I want my station to look. I've also decoupled this so that my craft is perfectly symmetrical, which should make it a lot more controllable. There we go. Putting pip orange pip in the center with slight tweaks and then rotating so that the orange other pip that's on the dial at the run is also there. And now it's a matter of translation so alignment wise we are good it's just a matter of translating and reducing the c distance along with the total distance the c distance is the if you level it into the level plane while the distance is the actual distance in the 3d world and as you can see by slowly fiddling we have managed to dock congratulations to the team at grumforks for successfully docking oh retract the solar panels we don't want this thing to be hitting retract the antenna Oh boy. No, it passed. Whew! Debris. What can I tell you? Alright. With that thing being said, let's extend everything and take a glory shot because this station is looking amazing and that means we will be, in the following episodes, be able to perform some very, very decent and beefy experiments. Yes, however, that will have to come in another episode. Thank you very much for watching. This is Drunk Force, signing off.